uh, these guys. Oh, hi there. My name's Elliot, but you may know me as the immature student. I didn't hear you come in because I was just reading Dune Messiah by Frank Herbert. I haven't made a video in a while, as some of you may have noticed, but I received a question the other day and I felt like it was quite uh, it'd be quite long to answer, so I thought I would answer it in a video and take the opportunity to re-kickstart the channel, as I have been meaning to do it for a while. So thank you to the commenter, and thank you to the multiple hundreds of people now who have viewed uh, a few of my videos, as I haven't really checked the channel in a while, and I saw I've got over 200 views on a couple of the videos, which makes me feel pretty good. Feels like I was putting something out there that's useful to at least a few people. So, apologies, I don't have anything in front of me to check the uh, the chap's name. I believe it was a chap, apologies, if it was not, who left a comment saying they're going to be going to university as a mature student doing biomedical science, I believe, uh, and they just wanted a bit more information about how I actually got in and how it may be for them. So, let me tell you what I know. As was stated in the comment, UCAS applications for mature students aren't as cut and dry, um, just on the basis that UCAS is obviously the only way you can apply for an undergrad uh, course, and UCAS is designed predominantly for XA level students who are going straight into education. So for them, it is as simple as putting GCSEs, A levels, and then universities will generally accept you or not based on your education. If you don't have A-levels, so first of all, if you're a mature student and you have A-levels, of course, you still put those in. If, like myself and like this uh, individual who commented, you don't have A-levels, uh, then that's absolutely fine. Don't put those in, obviously, as you don't have any. As a mature student, you have to craft your personal statement, in my opinion, much with much more strength than average uh, 18, 19 year old students have to. So for them, it really all hinges on their education. For us, it all hinges on our personal statement and our life experience. So, okay, let me tell you how it was for me. I wanted to go to university doing creative writing uh, and I actually gave up full-time work um, uh, two years, I think, before I started university, a year, two years before I started university to focus on writing. Um, I wrote several novels, unpublished, but I did write several novels uh, full length. I wrote numerous short stories, uh, and I had a kind of a, an extensive back catalogue of the writing I'd been doing, um, which I could show kind of as a portfolio and also show as kind of evidence that I, A, have the interest in the field, and B, have some kind of life experience in the field. So. Going into something that's not creative, uh, like science, engineering, maths, anything like that, I think A is probably more going to hinge on your education. Uh, but B, if you don't have that education, I think you will, uh, if you have any work experience, so say, uh, I, I don't know what your situation is to the, to the individual um, who commented this, but if, for instance, you want to do biomedical science because your job kind of relates to it and if you get this degree you can get a promotion or move further up in the field, then obviously your personal statement wants to hinge heavily on your work experience because that is what you've got that all of the 18 year olds with the good A-levels and stuff won't have. So make your personal statement really reflect what it is that you have that is different to uh, to the standard 18 year old student that's coming in and making an offer there. So secondly, uh, you mentioned the access to higher education course. Uh, so access to higher education, uh, I didn't have to do one, but, uh, but let me tell you kind of my brief experience. So without naming any universities, I got uh, two unconditional offers just based on my personal statement, um, yeah, just unconditional offers to study the course. They said, hey, you look like a good fit, come and study. Um, if you are looking to get unconditional offers, then, uh, which obviously means you don't have to do anything, you, they just, you apply, they offer it to you, and then regardless of what happens, uh, you can go and study there. So if you're looking to get an unconditional offer, then I encourage you to look up universities which have diversity policies, like 
robust diversity policies. So as a mature student, as a student from a poor background, um, as a student from another country, you, uh, any of, if you fall into any of those, you will count towards their diversity score. So certain universities like Oxford, uh, yeah, Oxford and Cambridge, of course, and many other kind of sort of uh, really highly respected universities don't really care about their diversity score. Everybody knows that it's mainly white, male, British, middle class people who go to those universities. Um, and that's just kind of the way it is. But other universities who don't have the same prestige actively try and encourage uh, students from other backgrounds, from non-traditional, non-academic backgrounds, to help with their diversity. Uh, so, yeah, if you, if you fall into that, then uh, obviously apply to those universities, you're more likely to get an unconditional. Now, I got two unconditionals. I got one where I had to provide um, a kind of a, a back catalogue of my work and have an interview to see if they thought I was up to standard to study with them. Uh, and I had another where I had to do not an access to higher education course, but I had to provide them uh, a portfolio of my work. But I also had to pay, I believe it was 280, 300 pounds um, for some outside company to kind of vet the work and kind of basically put a tick next to it to say, that's kind of A-level standard, so yes, you should let that student in. Uh, suffice to say, I didn't go to that university. As much as I was kind of into that university, I thought it was really cool when I visited. Um, you know, in tuition fees, I'm going to be paying them £9,000 a year. I wasn't exactly prepared to pay them a non-refundable £300 when other universities had offered me placements without having to pay that. And obviously, that's up to you. If there's a certain university you want to go to and you have to pay for something to get in there, then I'm not saying that that's something you shouldn't do just for me it didn't really fit. Uh, so yeah, access to higher education, some courses you will have to do that. And I think what you need to be aware with doing non-creative subjects is that they are gonna be more in, in my uh, kind of, in my mind, I think, I don't actually know this, but I think that things that are more uh, scientific or mathematics based are more likely to hinge more on the education and they may want you to do an access to higher education course. Uh, what you may not know is that student finance in England, unless anything has changed since I applied, you actually can apply for four years in total. So if you're doing a three years uh, degree and a one year access to higher education course, you should be able to get a loan to cover that as well. Um, some people use it for a, a three year degree with a one-year master's conversion at the end, so like a four-year degree, you can get funding for that many years, or you certainly could when I applied. Uh, so that may be an option. You may have to pay for the access to higher education, but as I said, I did not. My advice is just do a, a broad spectrum application to universities, so apply to some that ha have high diversity scores. They may not rank as highly uh, in the league tables as other universities, but they are more likely to consider you as a non-traditional student. But of course, if there are certain higher universities you want to go to, then I encourage you to apply to those as well, um, as you certainly never know, and you shouldn't sell yourself short. Be like, well, I'm a mature student, so I can only go to a, you know, a low league uh, university. Um, so that would be my thoughts and advice on that. Apologies that I've droned on for a while, it's quite a long video, but hopefully it was helpful. Um, and thank you for the comment and thank you to everyone who's watched. Uh, we're just coming up to the uh, middle of the, sort of between semester one and two Christmas break um, in my second year. So I'm gonna take the opportunity over the Christmas break to try and get back into making some more videos for you, talking about my experiences in the second year, how it's all going, uh, and other great fantastic stuff like that. So peace out, and see all you guys in the next video.